It's a strange condition for our people to know that our best days are behind us. And while everyone else is looking forward to our demise, like vultures circling a man dying of thirst, we've got nothing left to look forward to. And this condition denies the very notion of progress we've been corn-fed to believe in ever since Karl Marx. Everything was always supposed to get better, and technology was supposed to help us get there. But here we are, lost in the fog of progress. We've put our faith in technology for guidance, and more than on humanity, we've come to rely on machinery. And though technological progress has transformed the whole world by now, it has led us astray from the things that really matter, such as the right to determine the outcome of one's life. Sure, life has gotten a lot easier, but do internet dating apps designed to create the least likely matches really measure up to having grandchildren who still look like you? How come pictures of our past tell us otherwise? When we compare then and now, it appears as if time has been running backward. The historical footage shows us a fantasy world, proving that the days have long gone when our peoples found any meaning in life beyond teenage girls selling pictures of themselves for two dollars each. Some progress. Now, life wasn't easier back in the day. It was harder. And the 1950s were far from perfect, but people still communicated with one another by looking each other in the eye rather than by staring at screens all day. We seem to have lost a great chunk of our humanity in this mist of mechanical engineering. The pictures of our past they show a much slower paced world, but filled with crafty architecture with facades of such a natural beauty, they were considered an artist's life work, an expression of his people's soul, as if the artist attempted to recreate nature herself. It's also unlike today's concrete jails, this urbanized world plastered over with walls of glass and steel. The only adornments we can afford to attach nowadays are surveillance cameras. I'd rather have gargoyles. The word sterility comes to mind. Our modern world has become sterile and yet at the same time it has become infected. And no matter how much we try scrubbing it off, the ugly in our present time just won't come off anymore. It's not the first time something like this has happened. When our peoples first came out of the forests and onto the stage of history some 2000 years ago, our ancestors too stood in awe before Roman architecture. And soon the promise of goods and people flowing out of the Roman cities and pouring into the northern homelands got the old Germans hooked on the wealth drug. Owing to the taller stature and greater health of the German youngsters, the German peoples traded their only possession, their sons and daughters, as tributes to Rome in exchange for peace and prosperity. And for a while, it was a good deal. And many a Germanic chieftain secured for himself a Roman title and a house in Gaul in exchange for his people's submission to Rome and their exploitation. There have always been traders living among our peoples, but unlike today, they've never been in power before. Treason has become an industry. And when the Romans had all but stripped European towns of its young men and sent them off to die in wars to the benefit of Roman nobility, and when many a German girl had been dragged off by Roman soldiers, never to be seen again. And when dark-haired and olive-skinned Roman women could purchase freshly cut locks of blonde hair on the slave markets to adorn their homes with, a conservative conspiracy was brewing in the forests of the north. The barbarians were planning a revolt. Not everyone was happy to go along with progress. And though it's true that Rome had brought the Germans unprecedented wealth, it had also brought them endless moral decay. We know all about it, because the same thing is happening to our time. Degeneracy Rome free. And this is what they aptly call progressive liberalism, because it's your slow liberation from yourself. Rome too had brought colorful migrants to the north, but migration, then as now, also brought savagery and rape to the German territories. And so a small number of reactionaries began planning, planning an uproar. At first, they successfully infiltrated the Roman armies with the sole intent of learning all they could, and then applying their ill-gained knowledge to destroy Rome from within. What ensued was a military massacre. Having led the foreign occupier into an ambush, the Germans butchered three Roman legions in the Teutoburg forest, 14,000 soldiers, a supporting staff of 8,000 people, and including General Varus' own personal harem of whores. 
all of them perished. Tongues were cut out and the Roman snakes were told never to hiss again. The wolf Siegfried had slain an iron dragon. Free again, the days of foreign occupation had come to an end and though Roman generals would return often to seek revenge, never again would the Roman Empire succeed in subduing the German peoples, not until today. For the European Union is nothing but a reincarnation of the Roman Empire with the same goals and the same ideals. Your liberation from yourself. And some of the German tribes we know later became the Saxons, who crossed the Channel to England and from there their distant descendants went on to found the United States. The American founding stock has always been a hardy conservative people, more interested in freedom than in free stuff. But don't we find ourselves, we Europeans and all of our colonial offshoots around the world, in precisely the same predicament again? Aren't we like the Germans of yesterday? But this time, we're facing a global empire. And we're told to surrender our way of life in exchange for the false promise of endless streams of goods and people pouring into our homelands. Same shit, different empire. And isn't it so that this global empire is also taking our best men as tributes and continuously for over a century has been sending them off to fight never-ending wars in the Middle East, to die in foreign nations many of us have never even heard of before? More wars for Judea and Rome. More wars for Israel and globalism. The fog of progress may have clouded our minds, but behind the smokescreen of technological progress, we have all but embraced our willing enslavement. When we just close our eyes for one moment and listen to ourselves, we can still remember who we once were. Warriors, free men. Perhaps our best days do still lie ahead of us. The days when our people, fed up with globalist levies, decide to take matters in our own hands. Those glorious days when we will finally stand up for ourselves and say, this ends here. We will not be erased. Not now, not ever, no. You, the supporters of global empire, you people have ventured into our lands too far and for too long. You have sacrificed too many of our children on the altars of progress. You thought you could siphon the life essence out of us to fuel your global dream by pimping our girls and killing off our sons. You were wrong. You've underestimated us. We're not your slaves. You're about to find out that over a century of the sickest degeneracy you've been shoving down our throats each day, seven days a week from sunrise to sunset, hasn't broken our spirits yet. Once our people emerged from the forests, but today, we shall emerge from the fog. And as you stand there in disbelief, wondering what went wrong, retracing your financial calculations and doing your political math, questioning why those people you dare to look down upon as if we were your cattle, now all of a sudden have appeared to have found the strength to rise up against you as our ancestors before us to crush your pathetic dreams. You haven't subdued us. We've led you into an ambush. We were just pretending to go along with progress. We're as strong as ever and with the freedom-loving peoples of Earth on our side, we dare to say to you, at some point in history, every people must choose to either walk the path of darkness or walk the path of light. And we have chosen. We have chosen to walk the path of light. The light from the hellfires we drag behind us to burn your memory from history.